Uh, you are already successful because of the cross. Success is kind of the, one of those tr tricky words where we don't think we quite have enough. Uh, what don't you have enough of? You see, if the world ended today, how I many you know they say you should have a stockpile of cash somewhere in your house just in case. But what if that currency becomes worthless? What do you do then? Hallelujah. You can't barter your way out of anything. You got to be able to do it. Amen. So this is the way I look at uh, everything in the garden. If we're going to talk about restored uh, gardening tactics, how I many you know that? Everything in Adam and Eve was already restored back to the garden, right? Because of the, the cross. Amen. So we're all back in that gardener mentality. So God has given you the kingdom. Amen. He owns everything to do with the kingdom. Uh, he's given it over to you. So what are you doing with it? Let's not have mental illness. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lecture you for a little while. I always do. Before we start getting funny. Uh, don't have mental illness because what happens is he's giving you the whole garden back and you're asking him to help you with the garden. That doesn't make sense, does it? If somebody gave you something, isn't that irritating when you give somebody a gift and they come back to you and say, oh, I don't know how to use this. That's irritating to me. So I always give people simple things like a used napkin. Anyway. So God has given you everything back. He has given you every blessing. He has blessed you according to the word with every blessing. He's restored back everything that was lost in Adam. He has given you the keys. How many you know that if he locked up hell, how many you know that he took back the keys of hell and death? It says keys. Amen. So it's plural. So how many you know that you can take your key and go re-unlock hell and help yourself go in? How many of you are dying to get back to hell? Don't be stupid, okay? I can tell you right now. I've talked to a number of people that have seen hell. They ask God to show them hell, and they have seen it. And I can tell you right now, it's not a place that was created for man. Amen? That's why we have our own key. Amen? You know what the key is? A proper mindset. Amen? All right. The anointing of God. Everybody say anointing. Anointing, if you are taking notes. Anointing, if you want to define it, is the yoke-destroying uh, burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. Okay, say that with me. Burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. That's the definition of the anointing. So the anointing, as it was placed upon you or poured upon you, because it was always oil, some kind of oil, in, um, some high priest, or um, usually, uh, according to the tribe of Levi, they would pour this oil upon you. And it would flow down. It happened even for Moses' brother Aaron. It was poured upon him, ran down his beard, all the way down to his feet. Um, endless supply. How you know that the anointing has attached to it an endless supply of blessing? Amen. So you are never without blessing. But how many you know that you can be the richest person in the world but still live in a tent in the bushes? Right? It's why? Because it's your choice. Uh, I've met many people in the Bay Area and stuff like that. Very wealthy, but v frugal. You know what frugal is? Another word for frugal is tight. They're so tight that they don't realize how much they have. I met one lady that her, her children said that she was worth over $50 million. But yet she lived in an old beat-up house. She didn't want to change the roof just in case it fell in. So her children are trying to get her to remodel the house, but she didn't want to. But we found out the real reason she didn't want to remodel the house was her husband that had passed away built that house with his own hands. You see, so she's living in a time machine, a time warp, where she cannot come forward. And that's kind of what happens with religion. It takes you to a place. Uh, remember this now. Adam and Eve in the garden. The garden was given to them by who? Okay, let's all answer. God. God gave them the garden. Amen. How you know that Adam was full functioning, everything was going well. There was some point in time where this, this creature came by. Well, we know him now to be the fallen Lucifer or Satan. He shows up. How many of you know that when he starts asking questions, the worst thing that can ever happen for you is when you're putting together something and you're by yourself and you're doing well. How you know, as soon as somebody shows up, you get confused. You ever thought about that? Everything's going well in your life until somebody shows up. And Adam and Eve had a somebody that showed up. 
How many know that religion always sends a somebody? Amen. And it's always filled with question marks. And he tries to coerce them into a questionable existence when everything was already given to them. So this creature comes in. He starts. He knows he can't get to Adam, but he can get to Adam if he can get to, to the piece of Adam that was taken out of Adam. And this is what happens. Uh, you ladies, here's, here's good advice to you. Don't ask too many questions. Because you will perceive too many truths according to yourself. And what happens is this, this creature comes and he starts putting these question marks. And what happens is he's trying to get them to go back. How many of you know that the fallen Lucifer wants to get back into heaven? Right? So he wants things the way it used to be. And here's what religion does. It takes what Adam was given. That question mark in the garden has existed all the way till today. Even with Jesus' finished work on the cross, people still rely on the way it used to be. Some of you are thinking real hard. Religion always wants it the way I got it when I first came to Christ. For some of you, the good news is you came to Christ here. So your head is not filled with all this traditional rubbish that somebody told you. Let me tell you something about Bible college. All you're doing is, if you say, well, my pastor graduated from XYZ, Bible Institute of Seminary and Hermeneutics. I mean, you know that. He went there and learned from somebody that he learned from. He didn't come with a fresh idea. He's just recycling something old, trying to make it new again. All right, while that has value, I mean, you know, it's not as good as brand new. How many of you would like to drive a 57 Chevy that's been restored and all of this? And it's pristine. Or would you rather I give you a brand new Mercedes Benz? You see, you want the new thing. Why? Because the old thing, although restored, it's not a new thing. See, so a lot of preachers, God bless them, bless their hearts. All they did was learn something and pass it. All they're doing is trying to dress it up and pass it on. And you know what? What irritates me the most is people who get a recycled thing that looks new and they act so excited about it when they already know that. They jump up and down. How do you know that there is nothing new under the sun according to Ecclesiastes? There's nothing new. It's just a dressed up version. The newest thing that happened was at the cross, Jesus said, it is finished. I mean, you know, everything was restored back to the garden. Uh, not renovated, not restored, but given back in pristine condition the way it was given to Adam. Because in God, there is no aging. There's no tarnish. The only thing that ages in this world is us, our bodies. Some of you have looked in the mirror this morning and says, oh, dear Jesus, Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my flesh. Look at this. I hate gravity. Lord, I can't wait till I fly with the eagles. Hey. Come on now. So we have this thing, and I've talked about being a new detective, seeing a cold case with fresh eyes. I mean, you know, that's what we're doing here. Now, I'm not telling you to throw away all your old stuff, but don't believe everything you heard. Because it's an old thing recycled to look like a new thing. But it's not really new because the Bible says there's nothing new. So here we are. How do we escalate success? How do we get from A to B and back to A? That's what actually happened. Adam was A, went to B. I don't know. What do you guys, uh, what does B stand for? Anyway. And we went back to A. So here we are. The anointing again, uh, sorry to stray off because we've got three pages of notes. I hope you got to doc time for Bill. Uh, anointing of God is the ultimate, everybody say ultimate, ultimate enabler. Because it enables you to function as Adam did, but not only as Adam, you have no capability to fall anymore. So you have the enablement to be exactly like Jesus. Because where are you seated? In heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. The heavenly place is the restored garden, by the way. The wilderness is an unkept garden. So don't have wilderness mentality while living in... Oh, gosh. Hallelujah. See, a lot of people come to Christ 
They hear a recycled message. They get wilderness mentality. They think it's, it's a wilderness out there. I got to fight and chop my way through all this jungle brush and finally get to the promised land. All the while, when you look backward, just turn around. Repentance means turn around, do it a different way. And you see, holy cow, I was there already. I was already in the best place. Why are you hacking through the bushes? All right. The ultimate enabler. It's God's supernatural ability added to your natural ability. Giving us supernatural ability to succeed in any challenge we face. Uh, you will face challenges because life is filled with people. That is your only problem, boys and girls, is other people. People come to question your existence. Question your wisdom. Question, question your, your dominion, your authority. They want to see if you really know what you're talking about. And that's all it is. If you stand your ground, how many know that nobody can shake you? There's not a person on this earth that can shake you. Some of you believe you are all that and a bag of chips and $4.75. and You are. And nobody can shake you from that. But here we are in the middle of the ocean, in the middle of the planet. We're not recycling anything. All we're trying to do is get true understanding. Amen? Here's one thing. I'm so rebellious that I don't believe nobody. You guys should say amen to that because we would not have these kind of messages if I believed everybody. I always question authority. Here's my thing. You can question anything you want, Amy. Go ahead, but take a look at the notes. Take a look at the word and see if it's bringing you life or a possibility of life. Because Jesus said you will have life and life more abundantly. So how many know that you can have life or you can have it more abundantly? I choose I choose more abundantly. You know what that means? I got to do it different than everybody else did it. I don't, I don't want. Now, I've studied guys like Watchman Nee. How many, some of you don't even know who that is. Watchman Nee. Uh, Watchman Nee was a possibility thinker. He thought along the lines of kingdom and grace. But you know what happened? He got killed for it. Religious people turned him into the Chinese government. He got executed. Uh, I got news for you. We live in a free society. Amen. We will still be tried... People still try and turn me in, but they don't know who to turn me into. <laughs> Promise. They always run back to their hierarchy and whatever denomination. And they say, he's preaching this thing. And you know what? What can they do? I don't belong to them. Here's what my pastor said in Chicago. He said, don't worry about other people. They just belong to a different tribe. And that's the truth because there's 12 tribes. I mean, you know, there's 12 possibilities that you could think of. But how many know that we are the new detectives? Hallelujah. So what are we detecting? Well, if you bank your stuff on the finished work of Christ, everything restored back to the garden. There was no decay in the Garden of Eden. Everybody say amen. You know that that means that nothing in your life prosperity defined is nothing missing nothing broken so nothing's missing nothing's broken and nothing under the anointing can decay so how's your life it's wonderful if you so choose amen hallelujah how many of you like to swim yeah how many of you like to swim underwater how many of you like to breathe underwater no can Unless you want to change your name to Bob. Some of you get that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Poor thing, if you, if you want something, but it's right there, but you can't get. That's why I like the word repent, because when I first became a Christian, you know, everybody used to say, well, you got to repent. You got a 180 degree turnaround. You're headed in the wrong direction. I, I don't think I'm headed in the wrong direction. I think the word repent and John the Baptist, as you'll see in the notes, I believe he was saying, and I'm not going to share that with you until we get to it. You wait. Okay. <laughs> These are the things when I study the word that like blow up in my face. I'm like, I good night. You know what I think to myself? Nobody got this. It's right there. And all I hear is the voice of the Lord. It's not really any words. It's like, <laughs> sometimes the Lord tells me this. I've been waiting for somebody to get it. Wow. 
Are we going to get it or are we going to bypass it and say, wait, 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 my pastor before said. You're not with your pastor before, you're with your pastor after. <laughs> if I'm not your pastor, go back to before. BC days, before Christ, go. Because, you know, religion always ha- tells you you got to gain Christ. You got to get more of Christ. How can you get more when you get them all? That's, that's what I call mental illness because your mind is put in a question mark where there's a period. It is finished. He didn't, he didn't say, it's finished? You didn't think Jesus on the cross like, it's finished? For real? <laughs> Babouge. Okay. We will face battles. How many know that you will face battles? There are, you do. How many of you face a battle this week? Yeah, what was their name? It always has a name. <laughs> and if it came through the mail, the name is you. You made that bill. <laughs> See, it's, it's either you or somebody else. But if it's somebody else, it's still you because you let them in. You answer the phone. You call them up. You ran into them. If I see somebody and the Lord tells me, make it snappy. Or it'll get snappy. You know what I mean? I just say, hey, how are you doing? Oh, sorry, I'd love to chat, but I got to get going. I got something to do. Oh, okay. You see how fast you can get out of it? Ah, oh, I would love to sit and chat. I got to go back to him. <laughs> You're out. Okay. Every battle. Now, 1 Timothy 6, verse 12, uh, for you Bible scholars who take notes and are going into the Word, remember, look at the Word with fresh eyes. Amen. Don't look at it the way somebody told you. Well, so-and-so told me. Shut up. What is the Holy Ghost telling you? Not the supposed Holy Ghost through somebody else. Remember, this is whose life? If it's yours, say mine. So, are you going to rely on somebody else's outdated theology or are you going to go with what you know? Hello. You know, here's the thing. If, if you said, oh, I got to renew my license. And somebody came to you and said, the best time to go is 8 o'clock in the morning. You know what happens in your brain? The best time to go is 8 o'clock in the morning. So you start looking what you got to do at 8 o'clock. You didn't even rethink this. You just went with what somebody said. If somebody says, oh, I ate at Seaside Restaurant. Oh, I, I ate one papillo. Oh, my God, it was so good. And you bring it like, I got to go Seaside eat papillo. <laughs> Except me, because I'm not like that. I don't eat fish. So when somebody says, oh, you got to try. You know what I think in my brain? Nope. Because <laughs> I don't even eat that. So why would I try it? Amen. I remember when I was a little kid, uh, I, didn't, I, I didn't know I hated seafood like this. My friend came with sardines and rice. And he said, my friend said, my best friend said, you got to try this with rice, bro. It's the best. And I was like, okay. Now, I had never explored sardines in a can, so I... Put the rice in the sun, and I ate it, and I was like. I was like, this is the worst bloody thing I ever ate in my entire life. And he's over there, good, huh? And you know what peer pressure does, right? It's good. You like some more? No, actually, I ate before I came. I was actually starving, but. You know the part of the sardine where the bone is, the, the backbone part? That was in my mouth. I, I called that file 13. I put it on the side. And when he wasn't looking, around, <laughs> And I learned from a very young age, no believe nobody. Nobody. Amen. All right. Here's, a, here's another thing, okay, you guys, just look at verse 10. Here's a good example since we're there. It says, for the love of money. 
You guys see the words there? What does it say? For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed. Now, religion used to teach, and when I first got saved, they used to say stuff like this. Money is evil. Let's see. I got one brain of my own. I can read. Is money evil? No, it doesn't say that. What does it say? For the love of money is not evil. It's a root of all kinds of evil. Doesn't mean money is evil. How many of you ever said money is evil? Oh, we're taught that. Seriously. And you believe that. So today, I want you to bring all your money because it's evil. Give it to me right now and I will dispose of it for you. If you're religious and you came to me from somebody other and somebody told you that money was evil and you believe them, I want your money right now. <laughs> oh, do you remember Marcy's mind changed? She got a revelation that she read that with fresh eyes and what does it say? Money is not evil. The love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. What kind of evil? Well, I don't know. Most of you ladies have a Macy's account. Anyway... Use the cash, not the card. Amen. You know why you get bills? Because you, you, you know, use the cash. <laughs> Too much work. Use your debit. And then, oh, I have no more money in my debit. Then don't use the card. Use your eyes. Make believe. Close your eyes. Put them on. Walk around. You know your closet is full of one and two time use stuff. Amen. <laughs> Some of you look at me. Shut up already. That's too much truth in this house. Shut no mouth. All right. Where are we? Verse 12. Okay, verse 12. What does it say? Allah, blackout. All right, it says here, fight the good fight of faith. You guys see that, verse 12? Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. You know what all that means? You know what that all means? All of it? Simply put, lay hold on eternal life. You know what that means? <laughs> you have eternal life. What's the freshness of the eye there? Lay hold on it. You know what I'm saying? Grab onto it because it's yours anyway. Why let it go? Why try and pursue something you already have? It says lay hold. You know what hold is? It's yours. So if it's yours, then who's going to tell you it's not yours? Huh? If you're not sure, give me your cocky. If you're not sure, that's yours. Give me your wallet. You're not sure it's yours either. If you're like, first thing you'll be like, no. You know, you lay hold on it. It's mine. So what do you do with eternal life then? Grab onto it. It's yours. To which you are also called. You know, God called you to eternal life. All you got to do is lay hold on it. I, I don't know about you. Uh, some of you not getting this? Well, hot time. And it says here, and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Here's a room full of many witnesses. How many of you with all confidence can say, I am going to heaven when this body expires. And I'm going to join all my family that have laid hold on eternal life. Okay, there you go. You go in heaven. How hard was that? It doesn't say you have to get on your face, cry out to the Lord to save you. It's, all it says was, lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed. Did you just confess? I'm going to heaven. Say this, I love Jesus. Jesus loves me. We cannot be separated ever. Okay, Pa. So if somebody asks you if you're a Christian, what do you say? Well, you know what religion does? Oh, when did you confess? When did you give your heart to Jesus? What was the date? Where's your certificate? Do you have a picture to prove that you're going to heaven? I get on picture, I get on big middle finger on them. <laughs> and here's what it says on the certificate. The certificate of none of your business is between me and God. Is that easy for you? Whose business is it if you confess if you're going to heaven? Are they the one going to be holding open the gate? You know what probably will happen? One of your worst enemies on this earth is going to get to heaven before you. And they're going to be holding the gate. 
And I'm going to say, isn't God good? And you're going to be looking at this abyss below. And you're going to say, he's real good. Close the gate and lock him. I <laughs> stay outside. Anyway, because you cannot kick him to hell, right? Because it's a personal decision. And no, I'm just playing. Amen. Everybody, everybody has that right and privilege to go to heaven. I don't think anybody's taking God up on the offer of going to hell. All I know is when you pass from this body and you look and you say, hmm, soda A or soda B? Remember that? She was just talking about that in the back. Soda A, hello, he was talking about soda A. I like the crack. I was communion. I like the crack because <laughs> today's crackers was fresh. If you got one, stay one. Go back and cash them in. Go get one. That, hey, that sucker was good today. I was like, oh, yeah. You know, it's the best part of, of those crackers, wheat thins, the salt. Yeah, man. Because we're all just cows existing, looking for salt in the pasture. Anyway, shut up your head. Okay. Have you confessed a good confession? I like the cracker. Change cracker to Jesus. Well, Jesus is the bread of life. So you can say, I like that cracker. How I many you can say, I like the cracker? His name is Jesus. Because you partake of Jesus and you become one with him. You like the cracker? <laughs> well, where she's from, crackers is. Anyway, uh, in Hawaii, we got another word for that. <laughs> you see, in, Haw- in Hawaii, the word haole means foreigner, right? But it's over time, it's grown to be the person who telling me how to live where I already was living long time. <laughs> right? Yeah. Watching the news yesterday. I mean, watch the news. I like to watch it to get entertained. These guys on Maui building a seawall. Yeah, you guys saw the seawall. And the seawall, and they're saying, oh my God, it's going to destroy the coral reef it's going to destroy and i saw only white people holding signs i was like where are hawaiians there in the tent eating musubi they're eating the bento anyway you know if you're part of a protest but you're not really protesting you're there for the free food you're all right in my book okay (laughs) everybody's protesting something why don't you protest religion Religion will stand on a corner with a sign, right, and tell you you're going to hell. Are you kidding me? Every time I go and see Mason in Oahu, I got to park at the Princess Kaiulani Hotel because that's part of their, that's their parking garage. So I park there and I walk. And when I walk across, there's always these guys on the corner telling everybody they're going to hell. But every time I walk near them, let me give you some, something. I pray that the anointing is so huge on me. When I walk there, they all get quiet. I'm not saying it's me. I think it's the power of God on me telling them, shut up, you're wrong. That's my personal take on it. Because as soon as I cross the street, they're all like, and one, one Hawaiian, he always like, hey, brother, what's up? What's happening? What's going on around here? Anyway. For some strange reason, they get quiet when I come near. I'm just waiting for one of them to tell me I'm going to hell. I was like, I'm going to tell them, I am talking to you. I have just visited hell. All right, back to the notes. Because how many know religion equals hell? Religion. A lot of people, my, me and my dad used to have this conversation before he passed away. He used to say, you know, I don't know about religion. I said, yeah, me either. He's like, why? You are a religious man. Whoa, brother. You holy man, you better stop right now. Because my dad was white with blue eyes. Oh, I had action. But the good part is, at the end of his life, he asked me to pray with him to go to heaven. I said, Dad, you don't have to pray. All you got to do is say, lay hold on eternal life. And he looked at me and he said, but I did some bad things. I said, I did some bad things here. Just walking into this hospital. Because if you think it, you did it. I remember downstairs, the security guard, he came up to me and said, Oh, visiting hours is 8 p.m. I was looking at him, I'm going to kill you right now. I'm going to body slam you right here. We're going to be on the news. 
the Netherlands is no. Just ask for a clergy badge. I was like, good night. I got to do that. I said, oh, I'm clergy. Oh, oh, what church? Why you kill? St. Mattress. <laughs> then he, he kind of giggled. <laughs> he said, no, for real kind, what church? We got to write them in the book. Bed Springs Chapel. <laughs> you know this Lolo? He's looking at me. Wow, I never heard of that church. I told him, you go to church. He go, oh, no, because I work night shift. Eh? I got I to gotta sleep morning time Sundays. I go, so you do attend Bed Springs Chapel. He's like, oh, you sucker. You got me, bro. And after that, it's my best friend. Every time I'm in the hospital, hey, what's up? I go, Bed Springs Chapel, bro. <laughs> I don't need to even sign the book anymore. All of you in here, anytime you want to visit somebody at the hospital, you can with all confidence say you are a minister from CrossNet Ministries International. You have my approval. Unless you go in there for fight with somebody. <laughs> then your church is New Hope. Thy word. <laughs> Assembly of God. Choose one. Or just say Bait Spring Chapel. Okay. No, for real. You want to go visit somebody late at night and you're like, oh, 8 o'clock. I mean, you know, the religion will tell you 8 o'clock is the cutoff date or the cutoff time. How I mean, you know, you can go now. Just go to the front desk and say, can I have a clergy badge, please? I'm a minister for CrossNet. Okay, they open the book. <laughs> Here's your badge. Clip it on your arm. says clergy. You can even make these at home. They look like the one they get. Before, it used to be hard and grave badges. Now, it's just one laminated thing says clergy. Put them on your shirt. You can walk all over. Oh, yeah. Why? You guys not going to go there for a cup, eh? Okay. Before, they used to have an official list. You know, our list changed all the time because people come here for a little while and they dig out. They learn what they learn. They say, oh, it's too much for me. I got to go back to my little grass shack and call it a mansion in the sky instead of here. Anyway, some of you will get that later. Okay, back to the notes. We got a lot to cover. 6.30 tonight comes quickly. Okay. <laughs> that one a little bit delayed. Okay, fight the good fight of faith. You all know how to fight the good fight of faith? Easy, just exist and think correctly and you have already won the battle of faith. As believers, we will fight many battles, but we... You win already. Say, I win already. Pigeon, in your best pigeon, say, I win already. I no need. Okay. Battles are real, but our victories are. Read it. What does it say? Battles are real, but our victories are more real. You guys like that? Uh, we need the guidance of the Holy Spirit because there will be fights we will not be able to win without Him. You know what the biggest fight you're going to fight is old theology and religion. That's where you got to rely on the Holy Spirit. To in, uh, you'll see it right here. Uh, I'll show you. All right. Hold on. Second Corinthians 2 verse 14. Amen. Everybody cool? All right. How's the children's church? Everybody good back there? I can hear them. That's good. All right. Take a look here. Verse 14. Now thanks be to God who always, everybody say always, leads us to triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. You know what diffuses the fragrance of the knowledge is? You don't go in there acting all arrogant, not thinking you know everything. Sometimes the best advice you give is the one with your mouth shut. Because when you look at somebody, you know all of you have this face though. When you do that, people question their thinking. Amen. You know, sometimes it's not, it's not good to get into an argument with anybody or escalate a domestic argument. Because people are looking for a fight. Why? Why are people still arguing to go back to hell? I don't know, but it's kind of dumb. So it says here, for, read it here. Now, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph. So how often does God lead you in triumph in Christ? So do you ever lose? No, so your fresh eyes tells you, you can never lose, but there is, he leads you to triumph. So how many know you got to get through whatever you're going through to the victory? 
And usually you got to withstand the fight in your mind. Amen? You guys can see on this side? Okay. Thanks be to God. Through And through us, he diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge. That means that God's knowledge is not arrogant. He diffuses that. The worst thing can ever happen for a lady is she puts five squirts of perfume on her neck. Rather than just one. Or half. Or maybe nothing. Anyway. Because some ladies, you walk into the cloud and all of a sudden, your feet want to go past your head. Like, whoa, grandma. What happened? Never bathe this week. <laughs> bathe. A local word. So, <laughs> bathe for you proper English people. He diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. So that means that you will be seen but not always heard. Because when people ask you for knowledge, that's when you give it to them. You diffuse it to the level that they are at. You're not going to come in with your theological brain and say, wow, hallelujah, praise God. If you got to throw a hallelujah, praise God, thank you, Jesus, in every sentence, you are diffusing your intelligence. Right? What you're trying to do is trying to make you, yourself sound so religious, people don't want to even be around you. Be human. Diffuse it. Because where do you live? You live on earth, but you exist in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen? So diffuse that arrogance, that temptation to be prideful and arrogant by telling them everything you know. The worst thing you can do is tell a religious person what you have discovered in the word properly because they will fight you tooth and nail to prove that you're wrong all the while digging a deeper grave for themselves to bury that pile of you know what okay okay in 15 it says for we are to god the fragrance of christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing okay so how many know that the perishing and you guys see it here saved and perishing everybody because of adam's error is on course to perish and it's talking about the ticking time clock in your life perishing how many know that there's a lot of young christians that die right and people always ask me well the bible says that we are guaranteed 70 years and 80 by reason of strength i said yeah that's true psalm 90 verse 10 with long life how many know that it it marks it right there but here's the thing not everybody will live a long life because everybody's a perishing or ticking time bomb until you put the fire out you ever watch bugs bunny when the the big bomb is on fire and then bugs bunny goes with it or the road runner you can put an end to short life quickly if you understand how it works that's it Everybody gets sickness, illness, and disease. Sometimes it just happens. So what do you do? Well, we as Christians learn how to exist longer. Why? Because we need to reach as many people with life. We don't go with a message of death. Are you kidding me? All I know is this. When my dad was passing from this life to the next, how many know that they get this glazed look in their eyes and they start looking past you already? Because they already have transitioned. They're looking past. And let me tell you something else. When they see Jesus standing there, they ain't going to even pay attention to you. It's like a little kid standing in front of your TV. They're looking past you. Why? Because they see the glory. And they want, that spirit wants to burst out of you and not come back. Amen. So people ask me all the time, so when you pray for people and they get raised from the dead, I said, those people obviously didn't see Jesus. That's why they come back. You get a new lease on life. And then the ones that do lock eyes with Jesus, I can tell you right now, if I saw Jesus, none of you would matter to me. I'll tell you, get out of my way before I kick you and step on you right now. I'm out of here. You know why? I saw Jesus a couple of different times doing my own thing and all of a sudden he appears i can tell you right now i said is this it are we going home because nothing in my life mattered at that moment already right now and he says no i just came to say hi you no good you teasing me like that i remember one time i was having these chest pains and i thought 
I was, I was slipping out. I could feel myself slipping out. My heart was like racing. And then I saw Jesus and he just was smiling. And I was like, okay, I'm ready. And I was 21 years old. And he said, no, nah, I just came to say hi. <laughs> but I'm ready now. No, there's work to be done. Okay, I'm going to do the work. I never know what would lead to this. I would have went. <laughs> So I got news for you. All of you will see Jesus. Amen. And all of you will run to him. Amen. Because you know him. Remember, where did you come from? We all came from over there. So when we come here, this is our battle. This is what we fight. How I mean, you know that once you start slipping out and you see Jesus, you're like, homecoming. No, go back. Oh. But some people, they jump right out and they run. I saw one time a little girl. A little girl. I was praying for this little girl. And all she had was a little, she just had a, a, she caught a cold. Amen. Caught a cold. And I was praying for her. And she had slipped into a coma. And I, I went to the hospital and I was praying for her. And then all of a sudden, she opened her eyes. And she says, stop praying. Jesus is here. I'm like, you're three. How do you know Jesus? And she says, Jesus is here. And I'm like. Stop praying. She said, yes, my parents won't know Jesus unless I go to him. I was like, what? Three years old? Are you kidding me? So what happens is she slips off and then she passes away and the parents come to Christ. They're ministers in the mainland now. They went from just being regular worker people. And I can tell you this. That value of that sacrifice that this girl at three said... If I don't go, they don't come. Amen. See, there's value in everything. You got to find the value in everything. Hallelujah. Takara, like, preach for me. Yeah. Okay. Hallelujah. You guys see the value? Sometimes one got to sacrifice so everybody else comes. That's how it works sometimes. How many of you know that you sitting in here is not a bad investment of time? Because somebody going to cross your path in the next few weeks. They're going to need what you have. Amen. All right, back to the notes now. Are we good with this? Diffuse. All right. Now, here's the word. Giving thanks. How many of you give thanks to the Lord for different things? Giving thanks. Now, this word is insures. Do you know what the difference between insure and insure is? Insure means something's going to happen. Insure means you already, it already happened. See the difference? That was, uh, I was kind of holding that out for you guys because some of you never pay attention in English class. Giving thanks ensures our victory. That means you already have the victory. It makes sure that you walk in the victory. You're sitting in the middle of victory. Insure means that victory is to come. Everybody good with that? I thought that was one of my greatest revelations today. You guys are looking at me like... Lolos. Anyway, so giving thanks... Reminds God that you are walking in your victory. Ensures your victory. Say amen. You don't go to the guy and say, I can buy, I can buy life insurance. Unless you're Portuguese. He can say, you cannot buy life insurance because you're not dead yet. <laughs> Forget it. Ah, bananas. Thanksgiving. Read that. It can be used as a weapon. How? Well, it expands our, ca uh, our capacity to receive. All right? So if thanksgiving is a weapon, and then, how many know that? As soon as you give thanks, the Lord says, that's not enough. He's not saying you don't have enough. That's not enough on his part. When he sees that you're thankful, he's ready to give you more now because you're thankful for where you're at. The Lord is always about promotion. God is always about addition and multiplication. So once you say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything I have in my life. You know what the Lord thinks? Is? Oh, wow. I got to give them more now. Amen. When you give your offering, are you thankful you're able to give an offering? So when you're thankful, you say, Lord, I'm so thankful that I get to give you this. How I many you know he's like, oh, if that's how you're going to be, I got to give you more now. Does that make sense? Okay, some people look at Thanksgiving like, thank you, Lord. Okay, that's it. No. If your child came to you every single time and said, 
Thank you so much. There's a video roaming around on the internet of a lot of Hispanic kid that was given a, a, a tablet. You guys have seen that video? And the kid was like so thankful. At first, they gave him a book. Remember that? Wrapped up. Oh, my God. You guys got to go watch that video. He was so thankful for the book. He's like, and he was Hispanic. So he was, gracias. Oh, thank you. And they said, oh, it wasn't working for the parents. So they gave him the tablet. And when he opened that, the boy had no words. He started crying. He was so thankful. I mean, you know that when you're like that with God, there's an endless supply of stuff. Start with your money. Watch what happens. Yeah? Start with your words. Start with your attitude. Start someplace. All right, our victory is only guaranteed in Christ, the anointed one and his anointing. All right, so how many of you are in Christ? There you go. So it's guaranteed. Yeah. The victory is guaranteed. Burdens are removed and yokes are destroyed because of the anointing. You guys go to that. To anoint means to rub on or rub into. God is rubbing his wisdom on us. Do you agree? Do you feel more wise since you came here? Oh, yeah. Some of you, you proved that with your mouth. Wise. <laughs> D here, the anointing will cost us. We must pay the price through prayer, prayer and praise. How many of you praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I do that all the time when there's green lights all the way down the line. Praise you, Lord. It's just so good. And then he step breaks. Okay. Spend time with God and receive revelation from him. So I mean, you know that coming to the church, if this is where you get your revelation, that's not a bad investment. You know, a couple hours out of your week, some of you a little more. You know that there's some people make up an excuse every time they're not here? I'll let that sink in for those of you. Everybody has a built-in excuse. Oh, I get this. Oh, I get that. Oh, I had to do this. I had to go there. I had to. But what is the investment of time? Remember, this is preparation for somebody else. It's not only for you. It's for somebody else that's going to cross your path who is about to go through something that's catastrophic. But you got the answers. Amen. Catastrophe is supposed to be a blessing for you, an opportunity for you to help somebody. Amen? Because you all know somebody that's going through it hard right now. And you know what the tendency local people is like, oh, good for them. Or, oh, oh, poor thing. Yeah, you heard it, poor thing. Here's the thing. If you're readily available, people will call you. My phone blows up all day long, all night long. You know how I know? Because my leg getting hot right now. That means somebody is calling, texting, writing. It's burning my leg. I get sunburned. Okay. As we face these battles, okay, let's slide that up a little bit so we can read that. As we face battles, we must what? Understand. And all you're getting, the word says, get understanding we must understand we can do the impossible with the help of the holy spirit does the holy spirit help you yeah some of you don't rely on the holy spirit you stand staring at your closet ladies like i don't know what i'm gonna wear here's what you should wear clothes clothes at a certain stage of your life the pants all look the same just the blouse change Am I right or am I wrong? Just the elastic got bigger. Okay. Then just pick your blouse early. Remember when you used to go to school, first day of school? You're so excited, you put your clothes out the night before. Remember that? Do that now. You're so excited to come to Jesus because it's the first day of the rest of your life. So you lay out your clothes early and say, I'm going to look good in this. You already look good. Smell is the thing we're after. All right. <laughs> You all look good. Look around this room. What a bunch of handsome and beautiful people in here. Amen? You all get hit on by somebody. Amen? Well, what? You going to chase them all? Come on. Low self-esteem will tell you, oh, I got to get them all. Yeah, come on. Here's how you know if you have problems with decision making. When you go to the bakery... And you look, okay, how many of you have been to the bakery? And you go there with one purpose in mind. What is it? Glazed donut. And then you get there, and then what do you see? Chocolate. 
Bavari. Sugar. 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 Dun, 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 dun. Now you don't know what to do. So you're going to get two of everything. Then you think to yourself, two is not enough. Give me four of everything. Then you get and you eat two and you're like, I cannot eat anymore. Now I got to be a blessing. Why wasn't you thinking it was a blessing before you went to the bakery? So your donuts are like clothes because you don't know which one you like. Hmm. I know you ladies can stay in the store for hours. You know how I know? Because I just walked past and the girl by the way you go to the fitting room, she tells you, I'm sorry, there's a limit of five and you have 40 in your hand. <laughs> Why don't you go to the back and ask the girl what is the limit before you start? And you're still going to have problems because you're going to be by the rack counting. <sighs> I like to try all these. Hallelujah. You know, when I shop for clothes, the men's section get women's clothes hiding backwards the hanger. They stash them in the men's clothes. So they can come back later for them. Treasure, treasure hunting. I know you ladies how you work. You guys are all boss. Okay. Battles are funny. Okay, we must understand we can do what? The impossible with the help of the Holy Ghost. However, we must deal with those things that grieve the Holy Spirit. What are they? Well, grieving the Holy Spirit, okay, and this is what a lot of religious people say. And don't grieve the Holy Spirit. That's the Old Testament. That was before the finished work. So a lot of people like to take that and say, oh my God, if I disappoint the Holy Spirit, He's going to abandon me and I'm going to hell. No, that's not. If we're going to talk about it, let's talk about how you grieve the Holy Spirit. It's this. First, you've got to ask yourself, where does the Holy Spirit excel and prosper? Hmm, that's a hard one, right? Because Jesus said, I must go and I will send you another comforter. You guys remember that? That means that I'm going as one person. So Jesus was singular in nature, right? So he goes to the cross, singular. He comes off the cross, does all these things, visitations. Then he ascends into heaven, one. What comes down on the day of Pentecost, you guys remember this in Acts 2? Is the Holy Spirit, and now He comes and di- he, he diffuses Himself. But n- no less in power, but everybody gets caught on fire, according to Acts 2. So that means that in the place of one became a spirit of many. So what happens is the Holy Spirit is there for everyone. Here's the thing. What grieves the Holy Spirit? I would think this. Not living up to your fullness of where you spiritually live. Where do you live? Well, in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. So you're going to grieve the Holy Spirit. That's going to be it. I believe that's it. I don't believe the Holy Spirit is out there with the golden hammer where it's ready to whack you in the forehead. I don't think it's like that. Right? Heaven is calling on us to go to a higher level of holiness. What is a higher level of holiness? It's this. Stop striving to do things in the flesh. Here you go. Start realizing who you are in Christ Jesus. That's the higher level. Of, that's the only holiness you can do. Behavior is not going to make you holy. Behavior modification is not going to make you holy. Mental modification will ensure your holiness. Because how holy are you? Well, the Holy Spirit has chosen to make his home in you. And you've chosen to make your home in Jesus. Jesus has chosen to make his home in heaven at the right hand of the Father. How I many you know that's a one deal, all deal? We're all good. Amen? So that higher level of holiness is you don't pop your head out of the anointing and try and make that God alongside of God. Holiness means this. Read it. Being of... What? Nobody can read. I've got to help you guys. You guys can see being of what? One mind with God. That's why I just said, don't pop your head out thinking you more smart than God. Be one-minded, singular again. Jesus put you in him and he is in heavenly places so that we could be singular. That's how when you arrive on the scene, you don't have to say much. People know they can trust you already. 
Like I go to hospitals all the time. I go to different places, hospitals, life care, whatever. And when I get there, people are like, oh my God, thank God you're here. I'm like, in my mind, I'm thinking, I don't even like be here. And you're thanking God that I am here. So while I'm here, let's make the most of it. What you get for eat? You guys want truth? I usually don't go to places to pray for people. I go to see in Niele what get for eat. Family parties are the same thing. You invite me to a party. I'm not going there for the people. I'm going there for the food. All right, don't you do that? What is the first thing you do when you get to a family party? You come to the table with a gift and the cards. But what are you, where's your attention? First you're going to gauge the food by the poo poo's huh? Okay. Then you put your money in the envelope. No lie. <laughs> if you come with a preset amount, I know that you come to church with a preset amount. This food is the best you're ever going to get. Pay up. Pay early. Seal the envelope. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. I hear the sound of heaven behind those walls. Future screamers. Anyway. All right. So holiness again means being of one mind with God. Okay. The Lord God is our might in battle. So if you want to talk about battle, Psalm 24, verse 8. If you don't know this, let's take a look real fast. Hallelujah. 24. Oh. My legs so I thought I was young. I was scrimmaging with the kids. Anyway. That's how I know that this body is aging. Read it. Who is this king of glory? The Lord is the, the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. So the only battlefield right now. Joyce Meyer wrote a book with 25 years ago about battlefield of the mind. Amen. All the ladies like, oh my God, Joyce Meyer. She's our pope. Oh my. Lucky Jesus is your hope. If Joyce Meyer is your pope. Anyway. Uh, the good part about Joyce Meyer is she came out of a sordid past, a real rough existence. All of you ladies in here, you know what I'm talking about. You found yourself doing things you shouldn't have been doing, but here you are. Amen. What do you do next? Regret your past or just forge forward into your future? Just keep going. My, it's all experience. Amen. All you ladies get experience. You as all miss lo mo me, lo me, lo me. Okay. Back to the notes. You get plenty experience. I don't know. I don't like no sometimes. Okay. Wisdom is knowing what to do when you don't know what to do. You guys like that statement? <laughs> Why? Because you don't rely on yourself. Who you rely on? The Holy Ghost. Read that again. What does it say? Wisdom is. <laughs> you all know what to do when you don't know what to do. Yeah, get out of the fitting room. <laughs> Save money. We're the one in the closet. Hallelujah. You know, we get people all the time, they want to donate their old clothes. And you look, some still get the tags. Oh, Lord. I'm looking, oh my God. Then I look at the size because I'm nearly like that. Size four. Then I look at the person that donated. No wonder. <laughs> One girl donated one time, way back when I first started at church, brought a bag of clothes. Like, these are all brand new. Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, Pastor, you know. Yeah. I know what? She's like, oh, kids. I heard kids. I said, like, yeah, but you know, you can run afterward. Anyway, she's like, shut up, you. She moved to the mainland, so she always reminds me of that. Remember the time I donated clothes and you was, you was getting on my case? Size 4. It's like this sister was like size 18. Serious. I said, what kid you stole these clothes from? I said, when you was on size 4. That's what I was telling her. When you was on size 4. Fourth grade. She's like, I'll lick you right here. Hallelujah. You got to have fun in this life. Amen. Some of you ladies get size 4 in your closet. <laughs> 
don't be bringing that to the church because you're just inviting my sarcasm to come out. Amen. You don't think get the lying in the middle of the pants where it was folded over the hanger for 20 years. We don't like them. <laughs> All discolored already. Okay. Where are we? All right. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord reside. It's already there, pre-installed. People were so impressed by Jesus' wisdom and his mighty works that they wondered about the source of his power. If you look at Matthew 13, check, check a look at this, bro. Verse 53 and 54, right? All right. Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished these parables that he departed from there. When he had come to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? What I want you to focus in on is, how many of you live around here? Only Marcy. Anybody else live around here? You guys live in right now? You staying in this area? Uh, take a look here. 54, when Jesus had come to his own country. You know that people are supposed to be astonished at your wisdom and your mighty works because you live here. You're not supposed to say, oh, because I live here. Because a lot of people like to go to that and say, oh, Jesus couldn't do many miracles. But he did miracles. He didn't do many, but he did miracles. All right? So people are supposed to be astonished at your wisdom and the mighty works that come out of you. Not the, not the wise, you know what, that comes out of you and the mighty words that come out of you. It says works. Amen. All right. I know some of you like my sarcasm. No? You got, okay, let's put it this way. You love my sarcasm except when it's aimed at you. <laughs> my sarcasm is not sarcastic. It's just jokes. And if you're the butt of the joke, then we know what you are. All right. Back to the notes. Some advice for you. Let's take a look here. All right. The battle plan to victory. How many of you want to know this? You're writing. Okay. What is the first one? Believe the Bible. Simple as that. Believe God authored it and breathed on it. Second one. Read and study the word. How do you study the word? Oh, I don't have time. Oh, my God. I get. I get time. For real. Next time you're thinking about calling or texting me, remember this. Pass it no more time. Save me some at least. Okay. I'm kidding, but don't use that as an excuse. Okay, next one. Renew your mind with the Word. Remember in John 1, 14, it says that Jesus is the Word that became flesh. So when you renew your mind, all you're doing is you're doing it the way Jesus would do it. Exchange your thoughts for his thoughts found in his word. Number four, honor the word and by making it the final authority in your life. Amen. Now, you're not a robot, by the way. God has made you individualistic where you have the power of free will and thought and speech. So all you got to do, when you arrive on a scene, remember this. You're not going to come with a howly attitude because you're not from howly land. That's a frame reference of mind, okay? You're going to come and you're going to speak. You're going to diffuse the fragrance of that wisdom and knowledge. And you're going to give it to the people the way they understand it. Amen? All right. Part of the reason why people say that, oh, Hawaii experienced one of the biggest revivals in the history of the world is because these white people came and were talking to them in a speech they couldn't understand. So I think the Hawaiians will come along, just listen, because they were astonished that these people talk like that. But once they started to get it, then they started to get it. Then they would have to take the ones that got it and pass it on to the locals. So you see, if you go to the history of Haile Church, you will see the framework of how they started to let the Hawaiians talk to the Hawaiians. Amen? And how do Hawaiians talk to Hawaiians? Bra. You know that most of you, and somebody call you up, and you go to their house, and they're like, oh, my God. And after they done spewing all of that, all you got to do is say that one word. Wow. 
I know. Am I right or am I wrong? Because local people, unless you Portuguese, you're not going to talk too long and too hard. You just want the answers how fast? Quick. How quick? Like, oh, well. Ah, I know. I should just shut my mouth, yeah. How many words did you use in that whole thing? One. Not even found in a dictionary unless you're looking for brazier. Okay. Trouble should not weigh in heavier than the word. Fifth one. Set your mind on victory. Why? Because where are you seated again? In Christ Jesus. So are you victorious or are you trying to get the victory? Oh, boy. Obey the word. By doing so, you stay connected to God. Number seven, understand your covenant, the Abrahamic covenant. It's an everlasting covenant. That's, if you study the life of Abraham, you understand that he was walking. He was taking over where Adam left off. Amen? All right. He, particularly, if you understand how he did the unthinkable. He was going to sacrifice his, his son. Amen? Yeah. I don't know about you. Most of you spend your time protecting your son, thinking you should sacrifice him. But <laughs> Lord, take them. Give me back when they better. <laughs> it ain't happening. I spent like an hour on a phone with my child last night. This hot head, I don't know. I know it's the matter. Anyway. <laughs> pray for him. He's getting some stuff going on in his body. But the... Are too busy for go doctor. Oh, oh you you busy enough that you are not gonna die either? Yeah, I hope so because this kid, I tell you, like he fills his life with all kind of stuff, and then he tell me, Dad, I just like you, I tired. Don't lump yourself in with me. You get your own life, but you don't have to be busy. Your life doesn't involve anything but volleyball. These kids, I tell you, they think they, 24, they think, oh, my life is so stressful. <laughs> you like trade, brah. <laughs> you like trade. And you know what he tells me? Dad, you got to come Honolulu this week because I get these people like me with you this week. You got to come. <laughs> I tell you, you know what, Mason? I was looking in my dictionary of my life. No more word, got to. It's under choose to. If I choose to, he said, why? I buy you lunch. I want $300 plane ticket, hotel, another 200 per night. Yeah, two nights. Okay, yeah, you're going to buy me lunch. The lunch that you never bought in your life, you're going to buy me. I told him, you know what you should be? A lawyer. Because you can BS your way out of anything. So your good looks no work on me, bro. Because you have for me. I thought your good looks came from me. It might work with the girls and the gay men. But it don't work with me. He was laughing. He's like, ah, just come. Somebody gonna buy you lunch. Oh, somebody now. <laughs> I said, is that somebody, Timothy Waugh? Is that the somebody you're talking about? This guy, he's smooth, you know. Dad, I'm going to buy you lunch. We go Wolfgang's. If you don't know about Wolfgang, it's not Wolfgang Box. It's Wolfgang's Wiener up on the third floor of Royal Hawaiian. Yeah, he take me there and I end up paying. Because he has my grandpa's spirit. My, my Filipino grandpa is the, I'm the magician that lost the rabbit. I lost a hat too. Son of a gun. And my magic wand stay in the car. Yeah. He pulls that one. My sisters always say that. That's was you. That's how you was. I never have money. as so I just keep get money. Anyway. All right. You guys all good? Pray for my child. He, the last time I saw him, he told, oh, dad, getting lightheaded, huh? 
said, this is because of you and your mara and you half of your mara. Don't no get me started. But I remember, everybody say that you look like how I used to look. Guess what? You're going to look like how I look. <laughs> Keep it up. Keep it up. All you ladies of eyelash extension, you better tell Mason how to put that back on after. <laughs> he might come next week, so give him gas. Okay. <laughs> He's just going to laugh because that's how he is, right? He's so laid back and easy going. He was telling me, Dad, I'm so mad at this guy. I like punch his face. I'm like, Mason, please. You wouldn't want to, you wouldn't dare damage your hand. <laughs> He's like, Dad, you can't punch his face. <laughs> I'm going to say one of the ladies in here. You guys are good at that. Okay. Uh, eight, use your mouth as a weapon to launch covenant talk. Can you talk like the covenant? Victory? How many of you have victory? So I'm talking like you're a winner, not a loser. <laughs> Whatever. All right. Labor to enter into rest. I mean, you know that you're in a seated position. What does that involve? Rest. Why? Because God, after six days, he rested. Jesus, after he was done with his deal, he went and sat down. The high priest in the Bible couldn't sit down. So Jesus did the unthinkable. He went and sat down. And where are we? Sitting down in heavenly places. Mary and Martha, one was sitting, one was working. Which one are you? Are you Mary or Martha? <laughs> Martha. <laughs> Refuse to be selfish and fearful, okay? By walking in faith, which works by love. That's another one, right? All right. The other one was refuse to worry. You guys all know that. Okay, 11. Pray. How many of you pray? Yeah? How hard do you pray? Hmm. Stop lying. No need. You guys, you guys understand what prayer is? It's whatever comes out of your face. You pray and say, I got a match. So whatever's coming out of your mouth is already a prayer. Like, oh my God, I catch every red light. And God is nodding in heaven, his approval. <laughs> you guys remember I Dream of Genie? Let it be done. Well, you pray and you say it, but a match, right? Yeah. Book of Mark. Okay? Don't be a dummy, because whatever's happening in your life is what you allow with your words. That's right. Oh, he always out there partying. <laughs> oh, she's so lazy. <laughs> he never cuts the grass. <laughs> He's so dumb. <laughs> you think I'm lying? Jesus was the one that said it. Whatever you say, you will have. Whatever you pray, you will have. You are saying your prayer. One comes from your head, one comes from your heart. Oh, you know, they're both prayers of some sort. Whatever you say. Oh, she spent all the money. <laughs> he always drinking. <laughs> I can keep going. You know, some of you are like catching a revelation. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> she always drive reckless. Mm -hmm. All right. You got enough. You get it? Mm -hmm. She take three hours in Ross. <laughs> God. That was Max all the Macy's car. I cannot even buy me on BBDs. Okay. She got a closet full and you still wearing the strap. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Every failure in life is a prayer failure. Pray and commune with God. Stir up the spirit of might. Can you do that? Easy. Whatever you say. Don't quit. Be consistent and remain patient. Not all strongholds are negative, guys. 
God desires our minds to construct strongholds that are built upon his word. So you got to have a stronghold in your mind. Amen. How strong is your mind? I don't know. Everybody's, everybody's different. I know one thing, right? If you slam your hand in a car door, the same response probably come out. Which word comes out first? <laughs> I know we're in a holy place, but there's a word. It's not in the Bible or the dictionary that the people say is a bad word. Amen. That comes out. And if you do slam your hand in a car door, like I said before, don't thank Jesus for it. Wow. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Oh, you like that. They're giving thanks for. Be careful. Amen. Uh, and don't blame the ground when you fall down. I just saw this. A couple days walking, this lady, kaboom, on the ground, looking at the floor. Oh, oh. you saw that, pointing at the ground. The ground don't move, it's concrete. See, people always have this, just this inherent ability to blame something or somebody. You slam your hand in a car door, you're going to blame the car door. You know, blame the kids that were nearby. Anyway. So your stronghold of your mind is just positive all the time. Amen? All right. God desires our minds to construct these strongholds. He did not intend for us to hold strongly to information that contradicts his word. That's what religion is. Everybody say amen. You're religious. I'm just playing. Okay. What would happen in our lives if we saturated our minds with God's knowledge? The way God does things. The way God thinks. What would happen in your life? Think about it. What would happen? Huh. Now, not the destructive part where you lick your finger and set somebody on fire. <laughs> this is not Marvel. Yeah. Some of you wish you had that gift, right? Because remember this song from cable TV? I'm squashing their head. Squashing their head. Well, if you were God, what would you do? Filled with love and grace and mercy. How would you react to any situation? If everything is changeable at the flick of a switch, which is your words, by the way, how would you deal with any situation? Well, Jesus dealt with it when Lazarus supposedly died. You remember? And they came to him and told him, Lazarus is dead. What was the first thing that came out of Jesus' mouth? No. This will not result in death. He is asleep. So I want you know that. He changed it immediately. But see, here's the thing. How long did it take them to notify Jesus that Lazarus was dead? Because the guy couldn't text him. We don't know how many days. According to the word, it was four days. But how many you know that? It could have took them four days to get to Jesus to find him. Because how are you going to find Jesus out there in the middle of everywhere? Yeah. Right? So they got to go find Jesus first. Lazarus is, by the way, according to their standards, dead already. Because now they got to come with the message of his death. Now, all I know is it may have taken days for them to find Jesus. And when they find him, <laughs> Lazarus is mocking. Jesus didn't go, when? How? Hallelujah. Local people be like, oh my God, I'm a dirge. <laughs> oh, you Portuguese people. I'm a dirge. I. Okay. So. He changed the whole thing quickly. Amen? How many of you changed something quickly? Make a statement. Don't ask a question. When you hear bad news, don't ask a question. Make a statement. All right? I know it's hard. Okay? Here's one. How would you all react to this? The banking system just collapsed. You all have zero dollars. How come? How? Why? What happened? I just said, don't ask any questions. What do you do? I'm not worried. I know how to eat guavas. <laughs> Amen? I know how to get papayas, lychee, mango. People in the mainland that live in nowhere, what do they do? Eyes, a surge. No? All you got to do is rely on the victory. 
I'm not worried. God is in control. Hallelujah. Don't follow it up with a question. God, are you in control? Just stand, stand, okay? Hallelujah. What is the worst news you can get on any day when everybody's different? Amen. Um, however you deal with it, just stay firm. I'm not worried. God is in control. That should be your first line of defense. God is in control and he's using me. He doesn't give me anything I cannot handle. So we got this. We'll take care of it. Okay. Use a lot of periods. Everybody good with that? Use a lot of periods. And if you ladies are on one, use an exclamation point. <laughs> some of you caught that. Some of you ladies. And every day I get one lady call me up. Yeah, I'm fearless. Are you on your period? How you know? You're so prophetic. Because you never call me for 27 days. Doesn't take a genius to be in ministry, guys. Just letting you know. Okay. All right, you guys all good so far? <laughs> if you have a wrong mindset, it will resist God's word. Right? Many times it's a challenge for the right information to remain in our minds because our wrong mindsets fight the right information. That's what religion does. You're getting a full revelation, but wrong mindset because it was pre-installed software. Um, sometimes it gets... It, Something gets discombobulated. It gets wrong in there, okay? It resists God's true word, okay? Okay, you see that? Right information has to remain there, right? So all of you, when you hear something in here, you got to go out and exercise it quickly, okay? Holiness is being of one mind with God. Here's a good section here. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. How many know that you had a spirit of your mind? Yeah. Ephesians 4. And verse 22. All right. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh, we're going to find them. Hang on. Okay. I don't think this one is on the top. That's why. My bad. <laughs> Tricks. Silly rabbit. 22. You guys see that? That you put off concerning your former conduct. Now, stop right there. Conduct. How I many you know the conduct is because of the way you thought? Remember, everything you went through in your life is only a result. Your conduct is only a result of what you thought you could get away with. When you're young, you can get away with it. Amen? How many of you right now, well, let me ask the guys. You guys are former football players. Anybody play football in here? Okay, today we're going to suit up and play. We're going to play the young guys. We're all going to play Hilo High today. Come on. Let's go. Those are kids, right? In your mind, what are you thinking? I'm going to boss them up. The only thing is they run more fast. You cannot catch them. And when you turn around, one of them is going to lay you out. Poof. And then you're going to get up all mad at them, but you don't going to do nothing because you're trying to find your head. Around here, I'm like, What is the reality of that? I don't know. Some of you ladies, you know, you could walk in stilettos at one time, right? You're 20. Let's bust it out now. Let's bust out those Vienna sausages. Let's shove them in the shoe right now. <laughs> Let's see how you walk now, Miss Sexy Fine. How about a pencil skirt? Come on, ladies. Let's put it on. Mm, look like you just robbed text driving. Hey, Amen. And that ain't Portuguese bean soup in your dress. All right? How many of you ladies would try that on? Nope. You probably have one in your closet. Size 4. Squeeze into that right now. This would be the Portuguese sausage not on the grill exploding. <laughs> I'll call that shredded wheat. By the time you get them to your waist, it's all shredded by then. That's it. Goodbye. Uh, you see, so there's things that we gotta come, we gotta come forward in our thinking, right? There's things that you can't do anymore, like I just did scrimmaging against the kids in volleyball. Oh, my mind was there. I was there. I was thinking, please don't videotape this because this must look. 
This would be the worst thing I could ever look at in my life. Amen. All right. You guys see that? That you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. What part don't you get about this? Well, we always, religion always points out the old stuff. Put off the former conduct, the old man. Okay, how many know those things are dead and gone? Amen? We don't have duality. Be renewed. He's saying be renewed. Don't go through a process of renewal. What is it saying? Walk in the renewal. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Because what is going to dictate where you are successfully in life? Your mind, because your words reflect your mindset. And that you put on that new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. How many times can you get righteous? One time. Say one time. Why? Because you're seated at the right hand in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So you are righteous already. Say amen to that. Amen. See, religion likes to separate these things and say, oh, we don't have it. We got to do this. We got to put off the old man. Yeah, you put it off by putting it on. You, you are already renewed in the spirit of your mind. You just got to be renewed. Think differently. That's all it's saying. Be like God. If you could be God, how would you do it? Remember, if God has no hatred and no animosity... And no revenge factor. How many know that if you become like God, all of a sudden, nobody can do you wrong anymore? Am I right or am I wrong? How many know that you can't do God wrong? Because you're in Christ Jesus. When he looks at you, he don't see you. He hears you. You see those kids? No, you cannot because you got the wall. But you hear him. Let's say the wall is Jesus. Everybody look back there. You see that wall? That's Jesus. But you hear all the crying in the back. That's God's people. Oh, God, help me. I only see you, son. What's that crying out of you? Low lows, dad. No worry. They're being renewed. Okay, you good? Yeah. We're almost there. All right, if we don't renew our minds, we will not progress as Christians. The spirit of the mind is a deeper level of the thought process. We refer to it as the subconscious. Uh oh. All right, when, you guys know what is hypnotism? That's somebody trying to take over your subconscious. It happens in religion because they always suggest bad stuff. All right, advertising on TV and radio always does that too. They appeal to your subconscious mind because they know that when you're faced with a decision, I got, how many of you use all to wash clothes? Anybody? How many of you use Tide? Why? Because it's the best. I, I said that one time in, in a church in Y and I, I was talking, how many of you use uh, all and some hands up, and gain? Uh, I said, Tide. And later, I said, Why do you use Tide, ma'am? She said, Because the other ones make me itchy. <laughs> okay. Well, hallelujah. Amen. How I many know religion should make you itchy? Because it's not a part of you. It's not. You know that detergent is external, right? You use that. 100 years ago, what did our grandmas used to use? Lie. lie. Religion is a lie. Anyway. You guys understand though, right? You couldn't walk in a store because there was no subconscious activity. You would just ask the grocer or you would just go get yourself, right? You would tell him, what do you have to wash clothes? And this is what I have. And that's what you would use. Why? Because that's what it was. It was reality right in front of you. All right. Let this message be reality to you. All right. When we renew our minds diligently and consistently with the word, we allow our subconscious to be engaged in a positive way. Okay? Although learning is a part of, our, of renewing our minds, we must set our minds to act on the word we have learned. Remember, you've got to match who you are. Okay? Otherwise, you go with some old traditional thing. Okay? 
Okay, although learning is a part of that, we understand it, okay? We understand learning is a process, okay? God desires our minds to construct strongholds that are built upon His Word. He didn't intend for us to hold strongly to information that contradicts His Word. So when we look at the Scripture here, how many know we pick it apart? Uh, A lot of preachers don't pick apart the Scripture because they just read verbatim right off a set of notes and they just kind of tell you what it says so they don't pick apart how it's laid out so i try and try to pick it apart so you understand the finished work do you guys appreciate that i hope so because when you go and study the word now you look at it with again fresh eyes and you start seeing things the way they should be seen okay okay how are we doing keep going down let's go it's, all right. I know there's a lot of repeats in there. Okay, God forbade Adam and Eve to eat from the tree of the uh, knowledge of good and evil. You guys remember that. You don't even have to go there. We, we don't need. They know. The emphasis in this scripture is on knowledge. God shared with them all the knowledge they needed. They didn't need an external knowledge. But what did the enemy come to do? Bring them something from outside a different tribal mentality into their existing theology and brought in questions. Amen? Okay. The emphasis, again, is on knowledge. God shared with them everything. They didn't need anybody else. How many know that with this finished work, God has given you everything pertaining to life and godliness? You don't need external. All you got to do is rely on the internal and say, okay, what is the finished work in all of this? They were supposed to, Adam and Eve, were supposed to hold strong to the knowledge of God. God never intended for us to get our knowledge from any other source. But, hallelujah, what happened? He comes in. When Adam and Eve decided to get their knowledge from another source, they chose to separate from God. God didn't hate them. His grace and mercy puts them outside until he could rescue them properly again. So what happens is because they trusted the knowledge of the serpent, they had to go outside and learn all about the serpent. So that when the truth came, they would know the truth. Religion has run with this thing all the way up until our present day age. So we come with a message of, a message of present day truth and reality. The finished work. So now we're here even 2,000 years after the cross. There's still people with duality. Still trying to fight and get through this life. How many know this? Already, it's already done. You can get through it if you just have the proper mindset. Amen? Okay. So here we are. Everybody good with that? Okay. I hope so. Because you're going to run across some real dummies in your time. I'm not even lying. And they're all going to tell you the church they go and how great their pastor is. Don't tell people how great I am. Don't. Promise. Because I already know. Anyway. (laughs) Just play. (laughs) I know how good it is. But the thing is you cannot gloat in any. Because it's the Holy Spirit that gave all this wisdom and knowledge. It wasn't like me sitting in a cave for 40 days and 40 nights fasting. It wasn't nothing. Right? Don't get me started on fasting too. Amen. Some people say, we got to fast. Up to you. Try. I like watch. I like see how holy you are after day 9, day 14, day 27. No way. All right. Let's all stand. Amen. Most of you should fast from religion and religious thinking. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. We're going to pray first, amen. I know some of you look forward, you like coming up for prayer and all that. Well, you can do it right there too. Lift your hands to heaven, close your eyes. All right, right now, I'm laying hands on you. Holy Spirit's laying hands on you. All of the hosts of heaven, the angelic realm is all surrounding you. What are you willing to give up? All right. Say this, Father God, in Jesus' name, I'm your child. I belong to you. I serve you. So, Lord, I ask right now anything that's not right, dispose of it. Get rid of it. I won't claw at it. I won't kick and scream to get it back. I'll just let it go. And in the right time, all things are delivered back to me. 
So Lord, I choose to make my place in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, seated next to you. So right now, Lord, wash away all the impurities in my life. Anything that's not pure, wash it away. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for each and every one of them. I thank you that you are right now empowering them. The anointing is upon them. Every burden is removed. Every yoke of the enemy is destroyed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Why don't you get an offering? Submit that, and then we'll pray for each other. Amen.